Ah, that ought to get it in. Why am I kicking the tires? Well, our C10 pickup truck has absolutely no steering, and the owner, he wants to restore it, but he can't even get it around the lot to do anything to the pickup truck. So today on Tech Garage, we're gonna take this old C10, we're gonna make it steer like a new pickup truck. Welcome to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now, 1987 square body Chevy pickup truck with a short bed. Man, I am psyched. No motor, I'll tell you what, took a lot of work to get in here. I had to kick the wheels. Can't even really steer it. It's all out of whack. We're gonna take care of that. But more importantly, what a heck of a platform to work with. Two and a half tons of fun. I swear we can't wait to get into this thing. But it's a really good point. When you're doing a full-blown restoration, refurb, body off, you gotta be able to move the vehicle around, whether that's the shed, the paint booth, the yard, whatever you need. And you gotta have brakes and you gotta have steering. So we're gonna start today. And I, I recommend, let's just take this whole steering system off and replace it with brand new. Exactly. Why? Well, it's a parallelogram steering system, and this is a beefy steering system. It's been on heavy-duty cars and trucks, and it's still on there today. They still use it today. It's yep. an awesome system. And the cool part is Rock Auto has old parts, new parts. This is an 87. Everything you could want, from the tie rod ends to the adjusting sleeves, over here to the inner tie rod ends. We got the pitman arm. We're going to do the steering gearbox, and, you know, we may even add some suspension components, some beef up the actual sway bar and linkages, but, man, this is going to do the trick. Keeping our tech garage tradition alive where we upgrade, not just replace. We're using all Moog stuff and there's grease fittings everywhere. So once we get these new hard parts on, we can take care of it forever. Yep. Now it's going to drive like a 2017, man. It's going to be like <laughs> new once we get done with it. Cool part is not only do they have the parts, they have the tools to do the job. We actually got the pitman arm puller and the prickle fork right here. And I'll tell you what, that's some dirty heavy work. I'm just going to go ahead and give that to you. I'm going to head over here and set up a demo. That is awesome. I am so excited to dive into our 87 tons of fun here. This is like a time cap, so you gotta love this going back to 1987. All right, our first step is we're gonna drop the pitman arm, then a tie rod end, a tie rod end, ultimately the idler arm, and this whole system's gonna come out as one piece. John will come back and help us for that. But for now, let's get this done off the pitman arm. Get a good seat. Make sure you use your safety glasses down here. Let me get that out. Gonna swap sockets here. Looks like we're gonna have to go to an extension when it comes time for the press. RockAuto.com sent us our press. Up and in, work it right onto the center of the stud. There's a little spike there which helps your cause. But man, you gotta love this. Back in 87, they weren't worried about fuel economy just yet when it relate, as it relates to pickup trucks. So this is just all kinds of fun with heavy duty steel. Get this on, we're going forward. There it comes right there. She's down, that's away. Perfect, we're gonna swap sockets here. Make sure that's gonna clear. Yep, gonna go ahead and get this tie rod end loose. Now, we may have to separate this with a pickle fork, we'll see. We're gonna get this guy, there we go. It's loose. Now we get the pickle fork, and we'll work it up out of here. Look at the grass and the dirt and the sand. All the debris down here, you gotta love this. This thing has about a thousand stories underneath. Let the pickle fork do the work for you. Down with pressure, there it goes. That one's out. I'm gonna get going on the other side. We'll get this idler arm loose and ready for John. If you wanna see how this parallelogram steering system really works, John's got that. All right, drove my parallelogram steering system right here so we can check it out. Now it all starts right here at the steering shaft and the steering shaft comes down to what's called a gearbox. Now you either have a gearbox or a rack and pinion steering system. And what this does, it takes the linear motion of the steering wheel and it changes it to reciprocate motion down here where it goes to the pitman arm. You can see I'm going to the left or right and we'll take an inside look at that a little bit later. Now I come down here, I got the pitman arm. Now the pitman arm's located right here. I can turn it and that's what's gonna turn. And that's attached right here to what's called a center link. Now the center link goes across, sometimes called a drag link. The center link's connected here to the actual inner and outer tie rod end. And I'll turn it this way. You can see the inner tie rod end right here, the adjusting sleeve, and then the outer tie rod end, which is connected here to the spindle assembly. 
Now the cool part about a suspension system is it has to move up and down and work in conjunction with the steering system. So all these joints have to move, all these joints have to be flexible, which means after time they're all going to wear out. So that's why we're replacing that one, not to mention we want to get the truck driving like new. So this is a parallelogram steering system, not much road feel because you're coming down, you don't have any direct contact, other than like a rack and pinion would be a lot more road contact, a lot more road feel. This is a good look at it. Now I don't really want to get dirty, but I need to get over there and help Brian because that's a beefy system and he's taking it off the truck. All right, making great progress. One more flat. Hey, perfect timing, buddy. I'll tell you what. Yeah, you did make great progress. You know, instead of getting that puller in your hand, let's go old school. It's an old truck. Yeah. I'll give you a little leverage right here. When I give you a little leverage right here, All if you right. just hit the top here of that island. Here we go. There we go. We'll break loose. Right down, there right go. there. Like we nothing, get this man. nut loose. Man, you mean to tell me I'm going to have to get dirty? <laughs> yeah. Sorry about your luck. <laughs> this is but brutal. This thing is awesome. <laughs> I got the wasp nest here on my side. Yep. Yep. And so we roll this separate down and that. out. Separate this. There we go. Goes. Look at that. Bring it right oh, down to the bench. Man. Set it right here. Beautiful. That is a storybook hey, right there. Just like I just showed you, just much dirtier. Yeah, I no love problem. it. I'll tell you what, what we need to do is go ahead and swap these parts, count the threads, get the alignment really close. Then we'll go ahead and we'll actually take the gearbox off. There's just four bolts holding that on yep. because we're going to place that as well. Man, I got the coolest gearbox cutaway and a rack and pinion. You don't want to miss that. Stick around. There's plenty more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is being brought to you by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Evapo Rust, super safe rust remover. And by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need. Welcome back to Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com. Now, it wouldn't be Tech Garage without cool cutaways. And our friends at BBB Industries sent us this cutaway. And the cool part about it is it's the actual gearbox that's on our pickup truck. And this is neat because you can look inside. Check this out. This is where the steering wheel actually bolts to. This is called the worm shaft that goes completely through it. Now, what's happening on the worm shaft is there's a ball nut right here. This is the ball nut. And what happens when you turn the steering wheel to the right or to the left, check out these little ball bearings right here for smooth transition. You can see them right up in there and then ride back down in there, which is just totally awesome because it's all cut away and you can see it. Now, what happens to the ball nut, it's connected to the sector shaft. That's what's changing the actual linear motion of the steering wheel and reciprocate motion down at the tires. The pitman arm's connected to the sector shaft right there at the bottom that Brian just took off. Now you can see it in motion here. There's also a spool valve. This is the spool valve. And what the spool valve does, if you have a power steering system, it directs the fluid either chamber on top of this ball nut here. So what does that mean? Well, if I put a bunch of fluid right here and none right here, that's gonna give you power assist in this direction. Direction. Vice versa, if I put a bunch of fluid pressure right here and none on that side, that's going to give you a power assist in the other direction. Now our rack and pinion, check it out. Once again, another cutaway, very cool. Why is it called a rack and pinion? Either have one or the other. You can see right here, this is the rack and then contact in the rack right here is the pinion. And I can show it to you in action. You turn it to the right or left, the pinion's contact in the rack. You got these helicot gears right here and it turns with smooth, nice action to the right or left. You got your tie rod ends on the end and just like that one, you have a spool valve. The spool valve is located right here and it does the same exact job. It directs fluid if you have a power steering system. What do I mean by that? Once again, I put a ton of fluid on this side of the rack, none on that side, it's gonna push it in that direction. And then what I do, if I put a bunch of fluid here and none on that, it's gonna push it in that and give you driver assist. Now, if you got a rack and pinion, you got some good road feel, nice smooth steering, or you have a gearbox, you're gonna have a long lasting steering systems. Either one of them, they're good systems. I better join Brian, he's sweaty and getting a little bit aggravated. That's a big old job and it's looking really good. We have made tremendous progress over here. We've got the new rag joint in. Both of those mounting bolts are torqued to spec. We'll have to come back and tighten this collar down, torque it to spec as well. But we got the new steering box in. Doesn't that thing look like a beast? Wasn't hard to do. We got all kinds of room, all kinds of access. It's half the reason this is so much fun. Four mounting bolts there. Those are all torqued to spec as well. Next step is the new Moog Pitman arm. Now, you remember how the old one was indexed going straight back? You can't mess this up. You've got four flat spots on the splines, noon, three, six, and nine o'clock. 
And it's the same thing right up here on the main shaft. Noon three, six, and nine. We'll take this Pittman arm, we'll set it right up in here. Temporary hold. I'm going to go ahead and run the nut down on it and secure it. We'll come back and we'll torque that later. But we want to leave it a little bit free here so we can index things where we need to be. I have heard a lot of grunting and groaning hit the other side of the shop. And that thing John's got is looking awesome. Yeah, it is. All right, that'll hold us. Perfect. You know what? I got the whole thing built over there on the bench, Brian. It's looking phenomenal. Awesome. You can see the new tie rod ends, the adjusters, the cool part, like you said, the greasable fittings with the Moog fittings there. You even got the cotter keys in. Everything's yeah. secure. One thing I did, I wanted to show you, though, I left this side a little bit loose because what we did, just to get the alignment close, we're talking about toe in and toe out on that spindle, is you can do a couple things. You can go ahead and count the threads, or you can put some white out on there. Ours was so dirty, man, I just pulled a tape. That's the best way Perfect. to do it. So what I had about six inches over there, about six and a half right here. So what I need to do is just bring this in a little bit. Once I bring it in, now this is not an exact science, but what's gonna happen here, once I do that, I can go ahead and tighten that up. And you know, we can put an alignment on it. If you have to take it to an alignment shop, don't worry, we don't have to, man. Well, we we, cool deal going if this, here. <laughs> we can at least steer it around the yard, steer it around the shed and the garage while all the work's getting done. Way better and way safer than what was on there. That's for sure. Love all, right. all the Moog parts. Yep, got that in there secure just to hold it basically to give us a starting point here. And you're good, you're I'll happy over down. here? Everything's great. Let's go okay. ahead and get this thing up in there. We'll just right. work it back in. All right. All right, get it. Let me get it on this side way over here and work okay. your thing in. We'll go back and we'll snug this all up and we'll get it going, but man, it's beautiful. Number one, it's gonna steer, we can get it around the yard, but you know what I'm thinking, man? I'm getting a little bit jealous. It's got the juices flowing. That's one, what I'm talking about. Two, three, you think we can offer 500? Maybe we'll use this thing as a project I'll truck? be happy to chip in on this project. <laughs> awesome, you know what? Go ahead, take a short break. No more than two minutes. I'll make a phone call. I'll see if I can offer him $500. We'll start there. Maybe we'll use this joker as a project truck. We need to wrap up the project M&M, and we're gonna do that right after this break. There's more Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Well, Project M&M Grand Finale is here. The Mercury makeover is almost complete. Tom, this thing's come a long way, man. We started out with that test drive and evaluation. You know, I had a pedal pulsation, steering wheel, engine misfire. I mean, it was pretty rough, but we had a good base to start with. The first thing we did was just look under the hood and see if we had a vehicle we could work with. We checked the compression, we sniffed the fluids, and then, and then said, hey, this will work, and we went from there. Absolutely. Then we tackled that P300 code, that misfire code. You know, the misfire code was nothing more than one cylinder in a coil, but for good measures, we went ahead and put them all in. And we had that emissions code, and we, uh, we figured out, we smoked the system, figured out we had a leak out back, and, and got that fixed. Yeah, a little minor stuff, you know. Then we changed our attention to the actual engine. We changed the engine oil, the air filter, the wipers, you know. Started to check out the fluid. We can go ahead and invest some money now and get it tip-top shape. Yep, we flushed the power steering system, the brake system, got rid of any dirt or moisture that had built up over 10 years and two years sitting in a yard. And right after that, we went down to the brakes. We actually did all the brakes, all the rotors, bled the brakes while we were down there. So now we got the stopping power we need. Man, this thing's gonna stop on a dime. Yep, and then we replaced the serpentine belt, not just the belt, the tensioners, the pulleys, so as the whole system was fresh and running all those accessories and we were ready to go from there. Why not flush the coolant system? I mean, we're gonna touch all the fluids on the car, so we did the coolant system, thermostat, all the hoses. We ain't gonna have any problem with it overheating. 
Yep, and we got underneath and changed the transmission fluid. It wasn't as messy as we thought. We've got a new filter on there. We cleaned off the, uh, the little magnetic pickup, got all the debris out, and so transmission should be working well for years to come. Shifting good, powertrain delivering it to the differential, the differential fluid, and the fuel filter. So we covered every fluid in there. We got that changed. We know our differential is going to last a long time. Yeah, then we replace the, the shocks, the struts, the front springs. That'll improve stability, the ride, and, and braking even. Yeah, everything. Yeah, that's a safety issue. You know, one thing left, we need to turn our attention to safety, the lighting systems. So what we did is we went ahead and just replaced the lights. You know, they're hazed up. You can buff them out and clean them, but what the heck, we put the whole thing in. We got the actual light bulb assembly on this side put in and the side marker. Not a really big deal, Tom. What you got going over there? Well, I got one last nut to take off and I can pop these out and put some new ones in. It's not only a, a safety issue, this thing looks much better with the new uh, lenses on it. Now the cool part is, is if you come over here, you can see now we can get the light assembly or we could have just upgraded the lights themselves. I mean, you got the light bulb right here. This is really cool because they sent us the gloves because it's a halogen light bulb. You don't want to touch the bulb because the gas will get attracted to it and it'll shorten the life. They also sent us some silicone to put on there. I got it all prepped and ready to go. It's just a matter of coming down here, twisting it and then inserting it into the place there. Once we do that, Tom, you got that light bulb out. We'll go ahead and put that one in in the side marker. You know, it's not much to it, but before we do that, Tom, there's a couple other things. We can button that up in a minute. I mean, it wouldn't be complete without floor mats. I mean, the car actually had no floor mats, and I was shocked myself, I gotta tell you. I went on to rockauto.com, and I'm like, floor mats, cream color, we're in. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they match, great, that's perfect. Yep, and one last thing also. How about the road rash? And believe it or not, yeah, this piece here is that side molding piece on the car right off rockauto.com. All I have to do is paint it, get it white, and I think I can buff the rest of that stuff out. So not only are we going rolling good, we're going to be looking good too. <laughs> right, covering all the details. <laughs> yep, and Tom, I tell you, you're a real trooper, man. So the coveted Tech Garage t-shirt. I know it was a lot of work. This thing's huge, man. It's worth a fortune. So I'm going to give you this Tech Garage t-shirt. All we have to do now is go on that test drive. And I'll tell you what, with all the work and the windows aren't tinted, I really don't want to drive. I'm going to let you drive this one. So let's go ahead and hit it with a test drive. Oh, that'll be fun. See how this beast performs. Absolutely. Well, Tom, I had a ball working on the car, man. It was fun. I mean, this project from top to bottom was nothing but fun. How about you? I, I sure enjoyed it. I enjoy bringing old things back to life, and, and it's great. This was sitting in the yard. Now it's, it's like new again. What a perfect story. I mean, it is like new again, and the cool part is, I mean, we're riding along in a car that maybe just needed a little bit of love, and it's in great shape. So we'll take a right here and run it through its paces, man. I'll tell you, before when I was running the test drive, what I did is I excelled. So go ahead and nail it for a minute. 4.6 got a little power now <laughs> before I, great. Yeah, before I had a shake and a, a rattle and that misfire that was terrible we don't even have a check engine light on our coolants right dead center we're looking pretty good no gauges no warning lights no chimes now go ahead and just go ahead and hit the brakes you know see how they feel before they were pulsating feel oh, pretty yeah. good yeah, yeah nice yeah, and nice. smooth yep all right yep. that's cool so we know the brakes are in good shape i mean we put rotors on new pads new everything and there's a burn-in process i mean you know we'll drive it easy we'll drive it fast we won't do the brakes 800 times and get brake fade a couple other things i did we'll go up around this curve and when you go up around this curve just pull it to the left or to the right a little bit and you know once you get up here a little bit before it was swaying like a baby buggy if i did that you could feel every bump in the road i mean how's that feel it's tracking great. It's uh, it's a one finger cruiser now. It is. I mean, it is. Just... Well, I got to ask you this question because I'm kind of wondering, Tom, how come there's a hubcap in the car, man? <laughs> well, I saw it had a little road rash, and it was kind of a flimsy thing to begin with. So I was thinking, after we've done all the make it reliable, let's work on the fun cosmetic stuff. RockAuto.com has OE wheels. We can put some Lincoln wheels. We can put some Mercury Marauder wheels on this baby. Hey, <laughs> hey, let's turn it into a Marauder. That sounds like a great idea. I'll tell you what. Thanks a lot for joining us for this show. This has been incredible, incredible. The Mercury makeover is complete, but we still got more Tech Garage, so stick around. We'll be right back right after this commercial break. Tech Garage, presented by rockauto.com, is being brought to you by ZMAX, the one product for your engine, transmission, and fuel system. Clamp Type, the clamp making tool. by rockauto.com, all the parts your car will ever need.
Welcome back to Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Now we got an interesting question of the week. It's all about the alignment. So I'm riding along and my car starts to pull to the right. I mean, it pulls sharp to the right. Um, so what should I do? Should I get an alignment? It's a great question, Ron, and it's a common problem. There's a number of things you're gonna need to check. I want you to think about fingerprints at the scene of the crime. The first thing you gotta do is check your tire wear. Yeah, and it's all about that alignment and tire wear will tell you everything about it. There's three things, caster, camber, and tow. First one we're gonna do is tow, and tow is actually the in and out tilting of the tire is viewed from the front. Yep. So if we're looking at that, you can actually see right here, if we take our tires and we tow them in like that, well, if we tow them in, you're dragging them down the road, you can see the graphic, it's called feathering. It's gonna actually feather from the outside and wear it in. Now, if I go this way, they're towed out. Now that's gonna feather from the inside out as you're pushing them down the road, one of the worst tire wearing angles. Yeah. Now our quick trick alignment system here is really cool because we can demo how to do it. And it's hooked to the wheel just like an alignment machine would and it works even better than the alignment machine because I can go right here, put the tape in, I can read it. It says 70 inches. Now we would just take the tape to the back of the tire. It would be 70 inches. We're good. From the front, viewing it from the front and the back of the tire, yep. we want that both equal. Yep, you do. And if there is a delta there, you can tell. Toe in, toe out, and you're going to need to get to an alignment shop. Camber the next one. We yep. take our wheels, camber. We take them in like that, they're way in, that's negative camber. When they're in like that, that's negative camber. So the negative camber is gonna wear the inside of the tire and our graphic shows that one side tire wear. Go out like this, that's positive camber. Now, this is probably Ron's problem because yep. if I go to the most positive camber, so if I push one out like that, yep. you can see the car is gonna wanna pull in that direction. And even if my side was okay, it's still gonna drag that wheel and it's gonna pull to the right like you're fighting, Ron. Yep, and the quick trick, once again, you put the level on there, you push a button, it's either up or down. You can actually read camber with this, which is really cool. Great tool. Last one's caster, man, that's either forward or back, the wheel's gonna be yep. positive or negative, it's gonna pull to the least amount of caster because that yep. wheel's back. So if you have one negative, it's gonna pull to that, man, so. There are lots of things to check. Don't forget, check the disc brakes, make sure you don't have a dragging brake pad, that could also be a symptom. Everything's going good, that truck made an awesome project. Don't forget to visit us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You know what, we're out of time for today, but we just wanna say that we're grateful and humble. Thank you to Rock Auto, thank you to the Tech Garage crew, and most of all, thank you to the viewer for viewing Tech Garage presented by rockauto.com. Ranch up. Production assistance for Tech Garage is provided by Chipola College, located in Mariana, Florida. Founded in 1947, Chipola was recently ranked as one of the top three community colleges in the United States.